so yeah. much and I'm actually doing the work, but it's not exactly, it's weird. Cause there's some moments where I'm like, man, I didn't, I, I didn't actually get it. But then on the other hand, I partnered with people who did have the resources. So I guess I did do it, but then people don't realize that I'm still working towards that goal yeah. because I've still been pushing forward on it. So the goal is to have your own RV, my own RV or sprinter van. That's a converted art studio so we can travel it around. And, and so, so you far. put that energy into the universe, mm -hmm. right? But it's almost like you're on this path. So maybe you didn't get the RV. I haven't gotten get it closer. In, yeah. I haven't gotten it in that exact way, but then I've partnered up with other people. Right. So I've still done the core of what I wanted to do, but you know, it, it shifted. What from, a, can I, can I ask you? Do you have Yeah, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, I always run into like a lot of passion projects, personal projects, and really, you know, there's always target deadlines and all that stuff. And I think putting it out there is really how I process it. It, it just really get, gets you going and really gets you like, you know, I have this date, I only have this much to be able to finish this. And that urgency is, is mm. how I use that. You know, I, th I feel like if you're just keeping it open, it's, it's, there's no adversity. And for me, like, if you have that target date, then you have that sense of urgency and being able to really like gather all resources and being able to really like accomplish something. Yeah. Whether it it could shift to a different direction, like you said. Yeah. Which is sometimes it's also a different opportunity. Oh, it actually leads to the bigger goal, but you know what? This is also a good opportunity kind of like a down side here. Rock. Whether it's it's a connection or a resource that right. sidetrack. Well, I mean, I think a good point to that is that even though I wasn't able to get it done the way that I wanted to, what did happen was, for instance, the first tour that we did, I met a group of guys that were makers and um, engineers, and they said, hey, I have a bus, but we don't know what to do and we want to do tours. I'm like, I want to do tours and I know what to do with your bus. Why don't we get together? Right. So we were able to pull our resources together. So yeah, my dream shifted because it was a dream that I personally had. But the second that I opened up and started collaborating with other people, then it morphed into something different naturally. Uh, but I was able to collaborate and then we both made our dreams happen together. All right. So that's me. <laughs> all right. So that's where I, because that's really where I wanted to go with the conversation, I think, is that, you know, oftentimes like we have like these big, great dreams, these like hopes, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's scary putting that to paper, like to, to or to put out mm -hmm. to the universe, right? Because ultimately you're going to be held accountable by other mm -hmm. people. Yeah. People are so like ready and willing to say, you didn't do this and you said you're going to do it, right? Yeah. And that's embarrassing. It's They'll like, judge you. you mm -hmm. get judged, sure. right? Um, but let me ask you, like, and. Do you continue? Do you guys continue to like put those goals out there or like, you know, I'm just wondering, do you, does that accountability help you to actually like manifest and like to get to, to get to your goals or, you know, is it better for you to like be quiet and just kind of keep it inside and just like kind of silently work away? I am conflicted on that one. I'll say <laughs> that there's some stuff that I do keep to myself because I, um, that I see that happening later and I don't want to overwhelm people with all of the different ideas because I'm just I'm a big dreamer and I have tons of ideas yeah. so sometimes I'm like I don't want to be like here's all of ideas and people be like it's just too much for them in my mind as a entrepreneur and as someone who has my own hustle like I at any time have different things happening and each one of them can pop off at a different time so I have a lot of things happening but I might not talk about them all because okay. I don't want to confuse them. But the other side of it, I feel like if you don't put it out there and you're just keeping it to yourself, um, you don't get the opportunity to grow or to have yep. other people trust in and, and get into it. Because the second I start talking about it, then somebody else is like, oh, well, I know this group that needs you or yep. I know this person that needs you or I would love to do video Absolutely. for you or I would love to do this. And, you know, totally. you can't get that. Even like, you know, old projects, you're like, you know you've been doing it and all that and you kind of just want to go back to that shelf again and reopen it you know because mm -hmm. you know there there are i mean in reality there's really a situation where you're so pumped and all of a sudden you like have to shelve it because there's another priority right but then you, when you think about it 
if you figure out a way where you can align all of them where they're all organically one brand mm. one project although they're all different overwhelming things but actually mm. it all leads to one right which is your brand your vision whatever project it is you know whatever date you're gonna do it's mm. an open project you pick it up put it down pick it up mm. and yeah. it's all organically going to your same vision yeah i got i got my i got something off of that and it's at least a conversation that you and i had um I'm an artist. I'm an artist first. Everything that I do is super creative, but um, I've been focusing a lot on Road to Artdom, which is my my art nonprofit where I'm giving back and I'm teaching more than I am creating. And I met a woman named Carrie off of a Facebook group of nonprofits that's in Florida. And she has a nonprofit called the Nomad Art Bus. And it's like almost identical to what we do. So we met, we were cool. I flew out to Florida to mm. meet her. And I asked her a question um, about, she was showing me some of her artwork that she was, her personal artwork. And I asked her, I'm like, so how um, often are you um, actually creating art these days? And her response was, the Nomad Art Bus is my art project. Mm. And I was like, oh. And I, when she said that, she was just like, yeah, you know, this is my personal art project. Me giving back to the community is the art project. And I was like, oh. And it made me feel better because I was starting to feel bad of like I wasn't painting as much like I used to before. But when I shifted it in my head that Road to Artdom is my art project, then I'm doing it every day. Yeah. And that kind of goes to what you and I were saying when you said uh, we had a conversation earlier this week where you said you've got these three brands and someone told you you weren't focusing enough on one of them. Exactly. And your response was, but this is my life. So you are focusing on it. But unless you kind of marry it together in your own mind and look at it that way, then it's going to look like, okay, well, maybe I'm not painting a portrait every day like I, I used to, but I am creating this full on art project that manifests in lots of different ways. So to you know, kind of add to that, I think, so uh, just to give you guys like some background, I had a conversation with one of my mentors, I'm not gonna name him, love you to death. Uh, but he, I got some feedback that I wasn't dedicated to the project that I've got three brands that I'm working on. You know, I, I mentioned uh, Food Tribe, I mentioned uh, Startup Sharks, and I also have a third brand that's in development. We're in stealth mode, so more, more info to come. Um, but, you know, I got some of the feedback that I've gotten, you know, and this is not the first time I've heard this, you know, from my mentor, from family members, from friends. Right. And a lot of that feedback has been, hey, T, like, we love what you're doing. We love your passion. We love your enthusiasm, but you're not focused. You got to choose this project or you got to do this. And I really struggle with that for a very, very, very long time, you know, because I have these three passions that are pushing me in different direction or pulling me in different directions. And then I also have people telling me, <coughs> well, you got to choose one of them. And like the reason why I left my job is because I wanted to define my own life, right? And while this journey hasn't been easy, you know, a lot of the reason why I manifest, like why I say stuff, like why I want to speak things into existence is because I don't really know what it's going to take in order to get there. But I know that that's what I want, right? Mm -hmm. So those three brands, that's what I want. And for anybody to come and tell me that what I want right is either not enough or that you know like the way that i'm going about it, it's not you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's just you have to be very careful so to your point right t in terms of like oversharing and having too much in the universe where you mm -hmm. know like maybe that was too big of a dream or you, maybe you just like didn't have what it takes to get that done right now or keeping stuff like within yourself completely and not sharing it with anyone. And then there's somebody who I think this is a big dream, but they're like, oh yeah, I could get you a tour bus right like now. That. Yep. And we're like, yeah, we just got a bunch sitting there like, right. Yeah. And that's not big. Cause I've told people what I feel is a big dream. They're like, oh, you just want to buy a car? Like that's simple. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, okay. So, 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 uh, sorry. So I just want to get us back on track because I want you guys, I know you guys have some stuff to say. So I just want <laughs> to put the theme in. So one of the things that I've committed to talking about this month is uh, the impact. It's Women's History Month. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we talk, just big up women, right? Like all the women and our, yeah, right? And all the artwork behind us hey! is all women. <laughs> but, you know, so one of the things that I love, uh, 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 what just about collaborating, passion, uh, creativity, especially with people from like disenfranchised groups, is that 
if there's like a lot of pain, there's also like a lot of capacity for greatness, right? So you look at like a lot of like what these, some of these great women have had to go through in terms of like being disenfranchised, and you start to understand like, you know, what their capacity is, right? Um, so I was watching earlier this week, this uh, TED talk with this uh, Arab businesswoman. Uh, I posted in the Facebook group, um, but one of the things that she mentioned uh, in terms of like her business strategies to grow out her companies was to turn shit into fuel, right? And then figuring out a way- Literally turn shit into fuel. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Turn, yeah, turning shit wow. into yeah. fuel, okay. right? So like the shit that you get from other yeah. people. And then also like figuring out a way to, you know, so work to keep your, your work to keep your life out of your work and your work out of your life. Wow. Right. So those mm. two things, there was a third, but those two things were what I really kind of walked away from. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how do you separate friends and family that maybe don't really get the vision? Mm -hmm. Right. But they still love and support you. Right. But then also to have like a crew of people that can keep you accountable and keep your your focus really narrowed in so that you can get to that that bigger dream later. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think a lot of that has to has to do with like the way that we are raised, our family influences and like the fear setting, the things that we tell ourselves to like be scared of. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So my question then is. Like, so if we're, if, if we're looking at, you know, like these big dreams and then also these like fears of ours, I'm just wondering, like, what are some things that you guys do in order to keep the perspective, to remember like the big version, but then also to remember those little lessons that you've developed, you know, with time and that, you know, you know that that failure is literally right around the corner, right? So that was a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> so what do we do to remind ourselves? Yeah. So how do you keep the big vision alive, right? Yeah. The macro and the micro, right? Because you have people that are, that are constantly telling you, you can do this. Mm -hmm. And you have people that are constantly telling you that you can't do this. And mm -hmm. you trust and love both of them. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? I think you have to consider the source a little bit. So it's, you know, there, there have been times where, you know, sometimes uh, it's valid. And then sometimes you have to kind of consider the source and see if they're projecting their own fears onto you. And there's been times where like even my mother is my biggest supporter. She, you know, is at every event that I do. She's on my board. She will cook for something. She'll, you know, she's there for everything. But then there's other times when I talk to her. And she's like, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> and there's, there were, there are some times where I'm like, ooh, maybe I should take pause. And then there, there was a moment where I talked to her, and I'd say, you know, when you do that, I get scared or I think I shouldn't mm. do it. And she was just like, oh no, 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 you're strong. She said, I'm scared. You shouldn't be scared because you are the dreamer and you're gonna push through. Like separate that. That's that's me that's yeah. scared. That's me that doesn't know how to do that. But you go ahead and do that. And sometimes I think, you know, people don't necessarily um, um, express that as clear as she did. But sometimes you have to consider, like, are they giving you real deal? Like, hey, you're trying to do something. You have no money for it and you're going broke and they're giving you real deal like perspective or, or are they in um, reflecting their own fears and are you then taking that on? Like, Maybe which one yourself. is it? And I, that's what I try to do when I'm listening to people is respect it, but see like, okay, is this like solid advice? Are they really giving me something that, you know, is for my good or are they reflecting their own fears and yeah. do I and need just to separate them? Yeah. Right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, people have different issues too and you know, you don't know what they're going through. Maybe this is really what they want to do and they're just discouraging you because they didn't accomplish it. You totally. know? So or they don't know how or to. Or they don't know how to do it and, and they could, you know, you know, kill your dreams, right? So I think for me, the way I look at it too is use that as a strength and really challenge myself. Mm. Like if, if this person thinks of that way, whether it's family or it's friends, like I use that as like, you're fuel adding almost. more cadence to to mm -hmm. my is that strength. is that the shit that you turn into fuel though yeah yeah right yeah definitely turn it into fuel and really trying to you know prove because i think i i you know like 
we all get discouraged easily and people just want to pull you down yeah yeah so like i it, it actually makes me stronger and really like watch me you know I, i'd i'd still do it regardless of you know but I, like i said assessing that type of person to like how much of that advice is really and weigh things out too totally you know like some obviously not everything was wrong about that person but also really like weigh things and knowing like which you know what part was right and what part is wrong so i think early on just seeing that red flag totally and i think that um you know just adding to that it's just like yeah for sure turn their i don't know if it's negativity or their yep. doubt yep. right because and the best example of this i think is that dude from fire festival right <laughs> that was confidence like ridiculous yeah. confidence yeah. but if you but if you don't bake accountability into your process then that's that's right that's the extreme issue. side right yeah. where you can't see nothing else but or you don't listen to any i mean because i'm listen. he had people around that were, we're saying giving him advice that's right giving advice or even people who are like that can't be done it's like yeah. let's do it right okay. yeah it's definitely a lot of the ego yeah. It was really like more of the ego for him to do it and without even really understanding and getting feedback and all that early on. You know? So it was a great you know I loved his passion. 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 And that was the thing. Like I wasn't I wasn't even mad at the yep. passion. Was, yep. You know, be, and, and the thing and what's crazy and then there's also the girl from uh Theranos. Are you guys familiar with uh Theranos the company? Mm -mm. So there was this uh, startup in Silicon Valley. They raised uh, hundreds of millions of dollars based off of like billion dollar valuation. It was basically this blood sampling test where you could it would take mm. a drop of blood and test you for like a, a litany, like hundreds of different oh, wow. like blood diseases mm -hmm. or whatever, right? It's all bullshit. Yeah. You know, like it was all bullshit. So apparently like, you know, one of the things that they had done was in order to make their numbers look good, they would take some of their competitors' products, run the blood test, through their through their competitor systems and then claim the results <laughs> that they did it that they did it oh my goodness so it's like that's like wow so unethical <laughs> but that's but that's what i mean though right so when you have this capacity to like not consider anyone else yeah. where where you're so zeroed in on this vision for a better world a better planet that happens as a result of you manifesting your dream right that if you're so narrowed into that that you can't connect with the people that you're looking to serve, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you're lost, right? Yeah. But on the flip side, if you listen to everything that your parents told you or everything that your mentors told you, like at the end of the day, are you building their company mm -hmm. or are you building your company, right. right? And so it's like, it becomes really difficult to yeah. not get yourself lost in that, you know, especially early absolutely. on for founders. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, definitely at the end of the day, it's, it's your call. You know, like you have to make your own shots. Mm -hmm. So, how do you how do you do that? How do you develop that that presence as as a founder to? Because you, I mean, B, you're you're a father. You have you know a wife. Uh, so you have some like very tangible things that you are responsible for. But at the end of the day, you also have this burning desire to you know serve people. So how do how do you how do you balance the two things? I think it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, like I said, it boils down to the decisions that you're making, you know, decisions. Like, like early on, how you could really identify that, like, okay, this is something that you either need to work on or, or this is pulling your, you from your dreams, like really seeing that early on or just seeing those red flags early yeah. on from people is it, definitely, you know, mm -hmm. crucial for yeah. you. Cause you could like stick on really listening to a mentor who's really killing you down. And then, you know, you don't realize it five years you've been listening to him. And then maybe it was really, you know, I, I've been to that too. That's I, why I exactly had a mentor I for five years, five just years, listen to somebody, listen to everything. Oh my and God. then, and then next thing you know, he, you know, I know he had alcohol problems and all that, but it was really like, he was shitting on my dreams and really like, he was giving me really good. I mean, I've learned a lot from it. Totally. Totally learned a lot. Like, and I'm just very grateful. But then it was also like a lot of anger that was, you know, mm -hmm. that was reflected back. Then like, you know. Well, dude, and, that, and that's the thing. Like, I think that that's just kind of like the spectrum, right? And I've realized that as much as people love you, support you, they've got their own ideas and they've got their own perspective. So it's like, for a certain period of time, it might compliment you 
or it might only compliment you for this thing or for this period, mm -hmm. right? But you have to be grateful for the lesson, right? And then also understand who you are and what you want and what you don't want, you know? And so I think that that makes it a little bit easier to, you know, take in feedback from people and say, okay, well, what are you really trying to get out of this, right? And so the reason why I bring up, you know, uh, so for our Facebook, my Facebook group, Mako Startup Sharks, our, we have a sensei of the week every Sunday, which is like someone special that you can look up to, that you can channel their energy to set you on for the week. And this week I chose moms. Reach out to your mom, right? Because your mom, like, she, she, if you want to talk about the person that can see the very best of you yep, and the yep. very worst of you. Every inch. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? That's and true. you're probably somewhere in the middle. That's true. And I'm so my mom. <laughs> it's weird. There's there's things I do, like my smile, little like like mannerisms that are like my mother. That right. I'm like, when did this happen? <laughs> but at the same time, like, you know, she she probably has all this passion for you that might not be yours, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, yo, I love you. Do your thing. Be happy. Thank you for being a part of this journey. But ultimately, I got to make this choice for what I want to do, mm -hmm. right? Um, the other topical thing, and I think that moms are an example of this, is, and we were talking about this before we went online, was uh, the, US, the, the, the college scandal. <laughs> yeah. That's the extreme pressure that we put on ourselves and our kids, right? Is like let's cheat let's not have any ethics in order to like get you ahead and you know what i'm saying like that's not the way it should be right it was wild yeah Shit. all right i don't know i got i just went i got a little bit of passion <laughs> on that one get mad. um let me uh i guess you know so we're talking about like mentors um and if we're talking about it specifically from the frame of like female mentors and like being able to come to them for advice. Um, I guess, what, what are your guys' like best practices for, you know, finding mentors, uh, you know, maintaining those relationships and getting the type of feedback that you need to help with like your creativity and with your business? What are, what are best practices for landing mentors and then effectively having relationships with them for your art? I find somebody that I want to work with and I make it happen. <laughs> like, that, <laughs> that's the, too easy. I know that sounds too easy. Yeah. That I set a goal of who I want to work with and I, and I make it happen. I've done that in several. Look, there Give was, us an example. Yeah. Yeah. There was. Well, when I was like young, there was um, I went to this illustration conference and I went in. I was I was on beast mode, like create. I didn't. I was on beast mode to what they did was it was really really cool. Adobe was a sponsor, and we all as artists were able to um, pick a piece of art that represented us. And then um, when we checked in, we got these um, stamps that were made of our artwork, and they were stickers. Oh wow! And then we had this book, and we were also able to send in. Um, one of our pieces of art that was in this little commemorative book with everyone. And in the back, there was an area to put the stamps. Mm. And I was like, cool, I want to go and meet as many people as I can so they can get my stamp so that they can see my artwork. And that was what my intention was. So I was like on beast mode trying to meet everyone. <laughs> everyone. And I, I, I was working the room so much that someone was like, oh, dang, you you must be trying to win the contest. I was like, oh, there's a contest? <laughs> They're like, yeah, whoever collects the most stamps is going to get a Canon uh, Rebel camera. And I was like, well, shit, I wasn't in the contest, but I'm in the contest now. I was using that as my way. I was like, well, this is a great way that I can just go up to these people that I want yep. to be in. Yeah. So after that happened, everyone was like, dang, hey, have you met this person yet? Have you met yeah. this person? I want you to, because they knew that they were getting excited by me at this point now competing. So they were like, I'm gonna introduce you to this artist. I'm gonna introduce you to this artist. And they were all cheering for me. So I did that. And along the way, I started meeting some artists that I was like, oh my God, you're amazing. You're on the covers. Your art is on the covers of everything that I wanna work with. And I saw somebody that was like, oh, I really wanna work with him. So we talked and he was said, okay, yeah, give me a call when we get back in LA. Maybe I'll have you work with me in the studio. And I was like, cool, sent him an email. Oh, I'm busy. I did. I sent him an email. I think first he was like, "Send me another one next month." I sent him next month, and he was like, "Send me another one mm, next month." Push it back. And then he was like, "You know what? Send me in two months. I'm traveling." And I was like, "All right." I kept on doing that, and I think it took a year for wow. him to finally be like, "You're so damn persistent. 
he's like, you know what? I'm um, I'm moving. I'm um. He was moving, or he was um, he was reducing down his studio, and he was like, come and help me move my studio. And I was like, all right. So we came. I came over. I helped him do all that, and like finally, he wow. looked at my art. It took me a long time to get to that, but I persisted so I mean that's one way I don't know that you want to go <laughs> that way but other ways you know I tell people even as a mentor I do a lot of public speaking I go to a lot of events and I tell um, people when they come up to me and ask me for my card and say oh you know I'd love to talk to you I'm like I'm giving you my card but actually send me an email because it's rare that somebody actually responds back and Every so often, I'll get that one person that actually emails and is like, hey, I wanted to be there. But most people don't actually take people up on when they say, mm. reach out to them. So be intentional with who you want to meet. Mm -hmm. Be consistent with the follow-up. Like, let them know that you care. Yeah. Right? If somebody says they'll talk to you, like let them prove that they're not. Right. Don't just be like, wow, that was really cool. I took a picture with this amazing person and then leave it at that like yeah. actually follow up follow and up. see what can happen they may say no they may be too busy they may right. want to charge you who knows but a lot of people drop off at that point and are just happy that look at me i got a selfie with mm. with oprah okay that's cool but like did you contact after that <laughs> what, what about you b how, how do you i think like it's very similar it's just being really persistent and consistent and a lot of it too is really also being able to find ways on how I can connect that person to mm -hmm. other resources. So using yeah. that whatever that I'm good at and I know I can do it quick, whether it's filmmaking, photography or other resources and use that as a benefit for them. Yep. That's hey, a really you know good what? point. This is what I do. This is what I'm good at. I can definitely make this happen for you. That's a you really might not good need point. it now, but in the future, keep in mind. And yeah. you just keep that dialogue going. Yeah. And then now just always that instinct now, like, okay, filmmaking, photography, Brian's my guy. That's a good point. That's something I forgot that I did early on too, because I'm an artist, but since since getting my art degree and doing all of that, I um, began doing marketing strategy and web design and all of this stuff. And um that happened because I was a millennial, which I hate to say that because I'm like on the cusp, <laughs> but um, I, you know, I grew up with it and I was embracing it. And a lot of the other artists, they were doing the old school way of like mm. printing books and all that. And I was like, oh, I saw a divide and I was like, oh, they haven't caught on yet. I, I know this is where it's going to be. At that time, I had people telling me no one wanted to experience art on the Internet. Mm. They always need wow. to feel it. Yeah. And I was like. I don't, I don't believe that, yeah. that this is going to change. Now, Instagram and everything is right, driven by art and the visual. But I could see that they were, uh, they didn't know. And somebody told me this phrase that I love, um, where there's confusion, there's cash. So I was like, hmm. oh, they're all confused. They don't know what they're doing. So I was like, okay, I can help you with your social media. Or I can help you with this. And they're like, I don't know what to do. So all of a sudden I got them at a vulnerable place mm. where I knew I could give them value and then in the end, they're like, well, so what do you want? You Do you want to be on this board with me? Do you want to go do this? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I just gave and gave and yeah. gave and gave before yeah. I even asked for anything. I think that, that is oftentimes the most missing part about seeking mentors is the relationship aspect. Mm -hmm. It's like you see somebody that you admire and you really think about the things that they can do for you. Right. And that's not what a relationship is. Absolutely. You know, a relationship is give and take, right? Yep. And so mm -hmm. if you see something that you want to take, well, ultimately, you're going to have to give a lot in order yeah. to get that credibility, yep. right? And exactly. then what happens later? Like, they exchange very valuable information, it becomes organic, right, mm -hmm. for you. And as you build trust and a relationship with that mentor, you'll start being able to filter out the feedback that's applicable to you, that helps push your business forward, and the feedback that maybe wasn't really built for you. Right. Right. But that's that's the big thing. And I think that that is also the other part of uh, being a mentee is that there is value in being a mentor because you get to learn how to coach people and how to train people. Right. So if you understand that, like the people that you're seeking out actually need people like you that are passionate on the front line. Right. Well, then all of a sudden you can kind of come back and say, OK, well, I'm going to teach you about this new cool thing that you might not know about. And in exchange, 
I need you to give me some valuable like dime pieces on like you know how to be relevant right that's exactly I know when I was young I didn't realize that but I was like oh they're keeping me around because I'm keeping them relevant and I'm teaching them about stuff that they don't know they and don't I didn't know. even realize that I was giving them value and the same thing's happening for me now I have an artist that's working with me and she reached out to me came correct you know gave me a cover letter gave me a resume and wants to work with me but she's telling me about ways that the younger artists are doing stuff that you know i'm not even exactly. aware of or she's telling me about experiences with other art organizations and how they do things and i'm able to and i'm just as happy to get the information from her as she is to like learn and to get my network exactly and i'm happy to do it exactly and so that's and i think that that is the thing with our mentors is like you know, if, if your mentor is coming at you from a place of like, that might not be the right one for you, right? Yeah. If they're just like telling you what to do, if they're not listening mm -hmm. and getting to know your problems on a deeply personal level and taking themselves out of it, taking the emotion out of it. Taking out what, right? what their strengths are and why things work for them and really looking at what you're good exactly, at. Exactly, yeah. right? And then in exchange, they get that energy that you're able to provide, right? And that's mm -hmm. the thing that... You know, I talk about value a lot. We, you know, we, we tend to think of ourselves as having a, a small V, low value, right? And we think like the Warren Buffetts and the Zuckerbergs, like they have great value. The Bezos of the world, they have great value. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they have great value in this area, right? But if you're telling me that those guys don't have blinders, you're crazy, right? right? You have your own unique experience. Like if, if Mark Zuckerberg was trying to tell me the next you know, uh, t uh, 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 about black barbershops and where they need to be. <laughs> I'd probably laugh at him. Well, maybe not because he's got all that Facebook data. That's but, true. <laughs> but, but, but you know what I mean though, right? Like, also, like he can't relate to, you know, the experience of like getting a haircut in a black neighborhood. No. Right? So it's like, when you go after your mentors, for sure see what they can, you know, add to you and like what, what value that they can bring to you. Mm -hmm. But then also make sure that you understand what your unique voice is and how them joining your circle right. is going to add value to them right. later. Right. Right. Because then they're going to want to keep you around and they'll come. And before you know it, you're going to be their mentor. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, you can turn around. That has happened Quick. to me yep. too. I remember having a mentor tell me that that, you know, one day I was going to be more powerful than he ever was. And wow. I was like, I can't believe that. And he was like, you will be because I'm giving you everything I know and I'm giving you my network. Exactly. And you're going to know more than I know and your network is going to be bigger. And one day you will be bigger. And yeah. <laughs> Within it ends. And then you got to pay it forward to somebody else. And yeah. And that's the thing. Like that's the energy that we're creating as creators and as entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like, this is our art. This is a way that we're able to generate our own sustainable energy, right? Writing and blogging and food tribe and, and working with you guys. That gives me energy mm -hmm. and I create and want to put it into the world, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you feed off of it, if you dig it, right, then that make, gives me more energy to do it later. And I want to pay it forward to somebody else right. and teach somebody else how to do it. Right. You know? Yeah. Dang. Um, I mean, I think that we got everything covered. Is there, what, what do you guys think? Is there some more stuff that we want to add before we hop off? I think that I, I just want to add some things about, you know, how you would give back. So like for me right now, I've been working with a bunch of interns and students for, you know, for the past two years. And, you know, I, I came from a background really didn't go to school of photography and like, Later on in my career, I had a mentor, but really didn't have, like, I had to literally, like, learn everything by oh, myself. Oh, yeah. yeah. And now that I'm doing it, for me, it's it's more of I get to learn from them as well. Mm -hmm. And for me, being able to groom, like, whether it's an intern or, or um, a student, it it gives me that strength more that I see progress in them. Totally. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my interns, like, if you're not learning from me... That means I fail, mm. you know, like I get to also check myself yeah. like, hey, I'm not, I'm not giving back. I'm not, you know, giving value to them. They're right. giving me the time, Damn. you know, and I wanted it to be valuable for both too, totally. and see that growth and also take them accountable to really like, they got to do the stuff that, and also helps me reflect back to, to all my mistakes that I've done before. I really like sharing that to them. So 
I don't repeat those mistakes so, myself because sometimes you repeat your mistakes and you don't really realize well, them. So, and that was my point. That's why I asked a question earlier about like manifest, like saying stuff and putting it into the yep. world, right? Because yep. when Pete, when when you said something, right? I'm such a believer in like verbal communication and written com- communicating. Um, when you put something out there into the universe, well, then all of a sudden you have people are like, well, didn't you just say that before? And if they ask you that, then they're counting on you. They're counting yeah. On you. They're counting on you, yeah. right? Exactly. So it, I had some, I have somebody that I collaborate with right now who did that to me. And she's like, I believe in you. You are incredibly smart and you have the network, but you're too busy. So she told me, she was yeah. just like, can you pick two to three people that are in your life that believe in what you're doing, that want to help you? Right. And can you have them do the fundraiser because you're not doing it. Right, and I right. was like, you're right. And she was yeah. like, and when you do that, let me get on the phone with them so I can impress upon them how important this is. And then you can just let them do that and you can lead them. And I was like, well, that's the, that's the other yeah. part of leadership though, then, right. It's like, okay, so if you put it out there, well, then you're responsible for manifesting it, for making it happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you put it out there and you're not able to achieve it, well, do you, was it your path? that was wrong did you make the wrong choices along the way mm-hmm. did you dream too big did you maybe have to create a, a secondary goal and make then it. you know what I mean? exactly yeah. right you know but ultimately like what it really is it's like well we want to go after these things right and if we're going after these things we have to bake in accountability and then we have to bake in a plan right a plan b for mm-hmm. sure yeah we have to you have to. We have to. Yeah. Because otherwise, like... No one else will. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. you're just saying stuff. Yep. And you're just saying stuff, you know? And if you're if you're not making the right progress. So I really dig that portion that you said about um, not wanting to repeat mistakes. Yeah. And I yeah. think that that's like the thing about our parents and yeah. the people that care about us. It's not that they don't... That they're mad at us or they don't believe in us. They've they been wanna... there. Exactly. Yeah. They've been there. Or even my mother, she told me, she's just like, you know, I'm going to try to help you with whatever I can. She said, but anytime I see you struggle, she was like, I'm sad. She yeah. was like, you just don't see totally. or understand. But like, it hurts me to see you hurting and knowing that, you know, I just got to let you do it. Do you, yeah. do you feel that same way? Like with your employees or people that you're like and see and i also wonder if that's how my the people that are mentoring me feel about me sometimes just watching us do the same mistakes totally. like when my when my person told me like hey you need to like let somebody help you because you're getting in your own way i'm sure she just like it's right there tatiana right so what is that come to what's that come to jesus moment i, I know you got we got to get out of here pretty soon no, but no, i'm just good. like you know so with like people that you're mentoring like an intern if they keep making the same mistake when do you say, hey, I don't know if I'm the right one to teach you or someone that's mentoring you and you're just like, you know what, I, I don't mm-hmm. know if this is like, what's that come to Jesus moment? Is it just like, you know, what we've been talking about? Just like, is it like, a long term? Like, when do you just stop it? When, or? When, do you, when do you just say, you, you know what, I need yeah. to pause. I don't know if this is right for me right now. Let's revisit this later. It, it, does that happen? As a mentor or as a mentee? Both. Both, yeah. I, I found myself as a coward, just I'll start it off. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've held on to hi- hires or interns mm. far too longer than I probably should have. Sure. Right. I'm not, yeah. I'm either I'm not equipped to teach you right now, we're not at right. a place yeah. where I can give you the value, the resources that you need or whatever. And what happens, right? Like you just, it just leads, it's this degradation of the relationship where it started mm. out so good. Yeah. And then, you know, slowly it just started to die. And I have nobody to blame but myself. I think in that instance, like, I've been there. And what I've done is uh, try to set up some sort of milestones or set set up some kind of... Like, I had some that I loved dearly. And we just... I just said, let's just set a goal for the next 30 days. At the end of these 30 days, we're going to revisit. And, you know... it. I think we did it for 60 days and she's awesome and amazing. But eventually she was like, I love doing this, but I'm going to move to the Bay Area and I'm going to find a job there. Right. So then it shifted. But she's still there if I need her and I'm still there if she needs it. But we had that baked in so we could check in. And it kind of helps mm. so that you don't have to have an awkward like, eh, this isn't working. Mm. But we know that we're so going to check in. it into the universe. Yeah. Yes. This is the goal for this position. And we're going to put it out there, right? Yeah. And, and that's what I'm going to be checking on to make sure. And if you're not getting what you need from me to achieve that, if I'm not giving you what you need, then we can have that conversation. But when I've done it without that, then it's, it's difficult. And you set yourself up for 
not failure, but inconsistent results. So you're, you're the parent there. Not, B, give us an example of maybe a mentor, um, you know, I, I guess like similar circumstances, kind of like on the flip side. Do you have any that you can kind of think of? <laughs> on a mentor? Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, it's more of yeah. that being, you know, a, as a mentor would be really because you're investing time. You know, like both ways you're investing each other's mm. time. And like, you know, like, like you said, you train this person, give everything that you want. And then all of a sudden they're not grateful. They leave and they just, you know, so I think you could really sense. I think I've built like a, a way for me to see that already. Really? And like, I know how much, you know, like how much they want it. I mean, I do test for that. I test how, how bad they want it too. Right. And how far they can go yeah and really being able to like test them early on and really identifying like you know this person isn't gonna yeah. just bounce you know like really testing them early on make it really hard <laughs> not even easy i mean it's tough love oh but, interesting yeah but then, then again like, you know like this boiler person, room. yeah and then now like all of those interns that i have are already really great relationship with them some of them have, you know, like I hired them become a studio manager and like there, there's other things that even jobs like, hey, can you do this? Totally. I'll give you a job. Like I'm more like I vouch for them because they've tested the road. Yeah. Like they've been to that adversity and they never gave up on me. So and really also detaching myself because sometimes you get you get, you know, like you get because you invested so much time and then you get affected. I don't get affected anymore because okay. I feel like it's not my loss. Well, I was, I was just going to say that I've started treating a lot of my, uh, you know, new and old hires, it's like friendships and relationships, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I do now before I bring on anyone is I do this exercise called 30 years in three minutes, where it's like, I want to know your 30 year vision for your life, right? And then we're going to figure out how this three months or this year at Food Tribe or whatever fits into that, mm -hmm. right? You know, and then from there, like once I understand like what their long term goals are, what their short term goals are, then I can identify what the goals are for the role. Right. And I, I almost want to like I don't want to make it like so cold and so transactional, but ultimately, like I want to understand what's motivating people so that I'm making sure that I can provide them the most amount of value. And so I try to treat some of my men like the people that I'm being mentored by, you know, if I'm doing that work of like reaching out kind of like the same way, which is like, you know, as a result of knowing this person, I want to be here or I want, I want to accomplish this or I want to achieve this, mm -hmm. you know, because I think that when you have that, that's all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, we can try to gauge if the relationship is fair. Because mm -hmm. if you're just being taken from all the time, it doesn't feel good. Right. And this process, just to, you know, kind of wrap it up, has allowed me, for most of the people that I've worked in the past, to be able to pick up the phone like yo what's good we might not be able to work right now together but i care about you yep. i still love you mm -hmm. can i support you and like it ends up like we can still have a relationship and a few should work together later yeah where if we didn't have that type of understanding in the beginning yeah you know i'm just we're, we're so green yeah, definitely. you know what i early mean on, like, exactly. early on. just yeah. accept that early on for sure yeah, yeah. And, and yeah like there, there's still a lot of that i'm really still really good friends with and I know down the line I'm eventually gonna hire them for other yeah. things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like I'm also one of the top where like I like to work with people that I you know like like us. We want to work with people exactly. that we know already. Yeah. We tested them and, exactly. and they know they can pull it off. And, and just to also give them opportunity because yeah. you know like you mentored this person and then give them the opportunity that they deserve. And it, it, it's kind of like funny like whenever I see some progress and it, it's I always message them. You know, I feel like your dad and I'm like proud dad clapping. <laughs> That's what I mean, progress, man. You know? Yeah. And they, we just laughed about it. So, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it's great to see definitely someone develop and yeah. progress. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. That I was, that's, really cool. that was good, right? Yep. Yeah. You know, so if you guys like this, you got to comment. Let us know, like, is this something you want to continue oh, seeing? Mm -hmm. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. This was... Um, you know, I, I, the hope is that we have this format where once a week we talk about different issues that we're facing as founders, as creatives. Uh, we want to, you know, make sure that we're respecting our arts and our passion, that we have that integrity.
but that we're also, you know, providing value to our clients, right? The people that we're serving, whether it's internal people, your teammates, different business partners that you have, the different clients that you have. So, um, you know, I, I definitely, you guys are part of the crew. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to have people here at the art studio because it like feels so cool to like yeah. let the energy flow because I'm in here a lot, you know. You guys hear this? So uh, this is again most just about everybody in this group is in LA. Tatiana is offering her space as a way to <laughs> now the whole like, everybody. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. No, I'm nah, just kidding. not everybody. Let me know. <laughs> but, but I'm but I'm just saying, right? Like you guys do have. Uh, these two that you can follow up with, drop some comments in the comment section, ask questions regarding their stories, connect with them, add them on Facebook, add them on LinkedIn, uh, ask questions about some of the things that we've talked about today. Um, but you know, we really, really, really appreciate your time. Apologies for some of the technical difficulties. Uh, we'll have a version of this for you guys uh, a little bit later uh, with another angle. Yep, um, this is rolling right here. Yeah, we got it over here guys, but peace and love. Appreciate your time and have a great rest of your Flex Friday. Peace. <laughs>